السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى أما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقضة من لساني يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين so first of all I would like to say Jazakallah Khairan to Sheikh Yasser for an amazing reminder and we'll start with where he ended actually one of the things which I remember from his speech he actually reminded us to smile so can you all fulfill the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu right now? So in other words, do not give me a look of death. <laughs> Please, just keep smiling inshallah. And as he was saying, balancing between the private and public life is extremely important. You know, one of the Sahabi Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu an, he said, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَحْدًا أَكْثَرَ تَبَسْتُمًا مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, That I never saw anyone having more smiling face than the face of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Subhanallah. But then you might ask, uh, that was the companions. What about his wife? So actually he narrated uh, one narration of the hadith. Um, the other um, narration says, كَانَ إِذَا دَخَلَ دَارُهُ بَسَّامًا That Aisha said about Rasulullah Wasallam character, whenever he will come back to home, he would have a smiling face. So whether it's public or private, Rasulullah Wasallam life was full of a smile. So please keep a smiling, inshallah. Um, second, um, as you might know that my topic is man-woman interaction in Islam. It might be, it might sound very spicy topic, as spicy as chan masala on top of Indian biryani. Uh, <laughs> but wallahi, at the same time, it's very serious. Um, so I will hope that you will listen to me carefully, as our many options have changed. And um, I will just give you a few heads up before I can start on the serious topic, inshallah. Um, first, by the will of Allah, I have started writing a book on this topic, Fiqh of Gender Interaction, or I might name it Man-Woman Interaction in Islam, under the mentorship of Dr. Hatim Al-Hajj, my mentor. And, um, for the last three, four years, I have actually designed a course uh, called Fiqh of Gender Interaction. For two, three hours, I'm teaching that nationally and even internationally, alhamdulillah. The reason why I'm tell telling you this is that I will summarize the entire course detail and the book detail in this few minutes what I have, inshallah. So please pay attention. Um, what we will do, inshallah, we are going to start with basic guidelines for interacting, uh, interaction between men and women. But before we can start, why is it important for us to understand this? There are two different extremes in Muslim community in terms of gender interaction, in terms of interacting with the opposite gender. There is one extreme which is um, fairly conservative, cultural, and they might have a religious backing for it. And they actually say it's because there is too much temptation. Rasulullah sallallahu said that the biggest temptation for the man is woman. So it's better not to have an interaction. So they believe, they believe, one extreme belief, that there should not be any interaction between man and woman. I really appreciate where they are coming from, but I don't agree with them. With all due respect, because of few reasons. First, Rasulullah sallallahu himself interacted with female companions. Yes or no? Yes. There are male companions and female companions they used to interact with each other, yes or no? So it's not idealistic sunnah. Then the other rational or psychological reason, if we believe that there should not be any interaction between men and women, talking about Muslim community, then there will be that awkwardness which we have today now when we are talking to an opposite gender. So when a Muslim man and a Muslim woman, if they are discussing something purely halal, following all the guidelines, but still there will be some awkwardness because we haven't taught them that what are those guidelines which you have to keep in mind. We just give them blank statement. If I am raising my daughter, she is a six-year-old, I will say, Fatima, you don't talk to guys, that's it. I won't tell her that what are the guidelines that you have to abide by when you are actually talking to the guys. So that's what we will discuss today, but that is one extreme. The other extreme in Muslim community, and this is a global problem in Muslim community, that they are okay with everything. Do kissing, hugging, whatever you do, but as long as your heart is clean, everything is fine. Have you ever heard this argument? Yes. Even that is unacceptable. What is a prophetic way, the moderate way of interacting with the opposite gender? And again, just don't mix with the term. I'm talking about interaction, not intermixing. Just remember this, inshallah. So inshallah, after analyzing some of the classical texts, I came up with four guidelines. Inshallah, we will follow these four guidelines. Our interaction will be halal. 
And if we are missing one or more than one of these guidelines, then our interaction will go in the direction of haram. And I hope you all are taking notes, inshallah, okay? The first point which we have to remember while we are talking with an opposite gender, and it happens all the time in workplace, in school, the first thing is that we have to have a respectful way of looking at each other. The gaze, sight, should be respectful, professional. I'm really sorry to use this word, but I have to since this is a youth conference. Do not check each and everything out. This is not Islam. Do not give dirty looks to each other. Do not stare at each other. We know, we all know those ayat in Surah An-Nur, ayat number 30 and 31, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, أفصار, keep your gaze lower for believing men and for believing women. But now we have to apply how we do this when we are talking to our opposite gender. There are multiple opinions about uh, this uh, phenomena, how we have to do. One opinion of these scholars, they say when you, whenever you are talking in school, in college, in workplace with the opposite gender, you just have to make sure you keep your gaze as lower as you can. That's the one opinion. The other opinion about the scholar, uh, which, came from, which comes from the scholar, classical scholars about this ayah, that whenever you are talking with the opposite gender, you can look at the face, but you cannot look at the privates, because it's an undeniable fact there is an attraction. So that's the second opinion, okay? The third opinion, which is a reconciliation of both, is that you can look at the face, but if dirty thought comes in your mind, dirty thought comes in your mind, then you should keep your gaze lower. So all this diverse opinion is giving us that idea that we should have a respect in our eyes, a haya in our eyes whenever we are looking at each other, even when interacting with each other. Is it clear? Okay, I will come to these four points inshallah, collectively, that how we can apply in different scenarios on social media inshallah. Second, after talking about the gaze, in terms of interaction, remember the second point. How to make sure my interaction is halal. Point number two. The conversation should be professional, not personal. Or in other words, conversation should be useful, not useless. Faltu. It should not be faltu. It should be useful, not useless. So I will give you one example. Maybe of the school, inshallah, because of the young guys are here. So if you are in school, what will be the useful and useless conversation between the opposite gender? So if you want to borrow a pen, that might be useful conversation if you will ask an opposite gender, can I borrow your pen? Let's say. It might be useful in some circumstances. But if you'll take a pen and if you'll say, it's so beautiful, right? MashaAllah. It's not MashaAllah, it's Astaghfirullah. <laughs> yeah. So that's actually useless conversation. And each and every one of us are smart enough, more than smartphone, we are smart enough to know that what is useful and what is useless. What is professional and what is personal. The reason why a useless conversation, personal conversation is not acceptable because it opens the door for an emotional attachment which I will talk in a later part of my speech. So just in terms of professional conversation, everything is fine. We are living in a uh, realistic society where you will be doing a group project. So if you are discussing something about physics in your project, that's fine. But once you are getting physical, that's not halal, that's not halal okay? So that's the second thing. Make sure professional not... Are you sleeping? Professional not... Personal. Very good, mashallah. Only one sister is awake. Okay. <laughs> okay, third one. Actually, before we can move to third one, should I mention one thing about jokes? Because that come under actually professional personal conversation also. So, since Sheikh has been doing marriage counseling for the last few years, I got the chance to um, spend some time with the youth. And recently actually I was um, uh, observing the teen psychology because I have to cover that for my thesis in Surah Yusuf. So one of the problem with the teen, if all of all the people who have taught classes in the unsegregated environment where you are teaching teenagers, boys and girls, you will notice this, that young boys will throw or crack jokes not because they are humorous but because they want to grab the attention of the opposite gender. Do you agree? Yes. They might not be very humorous, their personality, their reputation might be that they are very rude and mean. But just in that class, just want to, he, she want, he want to grab the attention of Aisha, Fatima, Maryam, he will crack a joke. So I would just suggest, I would suggest, just make sure sisters, when brothers are having joke, you don't motivate them by smiling. 
because you might be naive sometimes you will say shazia what a joke <laughs> but you don't realize that why he's joking i'll tell you a real story when after my eid khutbah i said uh, brothers please just end girlfriend boyfriend relationship and just come back to the halal relationship one couple came to me in my community anonymously and they actually said it that imam i want you to i want us to i want you to help us in getting married we want to end this relationship they were almost 18 19 years old and the one uh, guy was from pakistan girl was from bangladesh so it's haram if not makruh for them to do marriage right <laughs> sheikh was saying actually that okay before 1971 it was okay for pakistani bangladesh to get married but after barish and no it's haram okay coming back so i actually they were from my community and i spoke to the girl's father and to the girl i said what did you like in this guy on a serious note you know what the only thing which the girl said he's too funny <laughs> that's the only thing i'm not saying that humor should not be one of the conditions we all love humor but is that the only condition is that the primary condition you need to understand why he's so humorous you know why because the same guy's father came to me and he said imam can you speak to my son he's very rude and mean to his mother Oh, he's very funny with that girl, right? <laughs> Teen psychology. You need to understand. So again, professional, not personal. And again, within this, just one more thing before we can move forward. It's okay to follow the cultural norms as long as it does not contradict Quran and Sunnah. So let's say casual weather joke at the Walmart, at the cashier might be okay. But if you are in Pakistan, forget it. Okay. Um, if the cashier at the Walmart says, "Have a nice day," do not say, "Okay, I will." <laughs> say you too, likewise. But if you are in Yemen or in Pakistan, then just stay away because the culture is different. So sometimes you have to observe the culture. I was recently visiting South Africa for the first time for Islamic conference in Johannesburg, or as they say, Joburg. So at the airport, I asked a lady, assuming non-Muslim, I asked, "Where is baggage claim number 10?" You know what she said? The first thing. No hello, no hi, no courtesy. I said, "Oh, uh, how are you? Hope all is well. Can you tell me now where baggage claim number ten is?" And then I shared this story with one local friend in Johannesburg, and he actually said that ah, it's a South African culture. People love to take time, the formalities. That's the culture. So you know now what is useless and useful conversation between opposite gender, right? Moving to the third. Before we can move to third, let us take a small quiz. First one. Lower your gaze. Yeah, G A Z. Second, yes, professional conversation, not the personal conversation. Okay. Now the third. Make sure that you are avoiding physical contact. We all know those ayat and hadith which speak about avoiding physical contact. But whenever you are interacting with the opposite gender, whether in Muslim community or non-Muslim community, avoid physical contact as much as you can. Avoiding physical contact, I will mention some of the scenarios. But even within, when you are interacting without physical contact, just make sure there is some space. I I develop my own standards. If you can uh, smell the shampoo or deodorant, you are getting too close. <laughs> you need to get you need to get space, okay? Because sometimes young boy and a young girl, uh, they are op stranger opposite gender. They are standing so closely that the only thing which is between them is air, <laughs> nothing else. So you have to give yourself a, enough comfortable space for you and for other person. But even in terms of physical contact, I will go into little academic detail. Please pay attention. There are two kinds of physical contact. Contact. One is intentional. One is without intentional. One is intention to touch. One is without intention to touch. Let's leave intentional right now. Focus on without intentional. Without intentional, you are walking in the street. Your elbow, your shoulder touches to the opposite gender. I just performed Omar Alhamdulillah. Construction is being done. Crowded Mecca. I touched my shoulder to so many women unintentionally. <laughs> unintentionally, yes. Now, will Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala hold me accountable for what I'm doing unintentionally? Inshallah, not. Inshallah, not. Many times we need we need to understand this distinction. You will see a sister is giving a money to the cashier at Walmart, and her nail will going to touch the cashier's palm. You don't have to just cut the finger and throw it away and wash it up as zam zam. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Inshallah, we hope that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will forgive you because this is unintentional. Okay. Now focus on intentional. When you have an intention to touch, again there are when you double click intentional, there are two categories. One is with desire to do something bad. Please give me 15 minutes, Aki. Okay, with desire to do something bad, 
it means haram and we desire not to do something bad we desire to do something bad something haram all these scholars say it's haram but we desire not to do something bad there are difference of opinion so i'm talking about handshake how many times you have seen that awkwardness right you'll shake hand and then you say should i avoid the embarrassment or should i do this should i do that and then in some indian pakistani culture there is a concept of ashirwad that a guy will going to keep his hand on the head of the opposite gender jeeter or beta all those things those bollywood scenes they happen that happen in real life also how to do this what is the idealistic sunna or following this so first of all we need to understand that some classical scholars say even shaking hand with the opposite gender we should stay away because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't do it um uh, even actually when sisters women uh, female companions accepted islam rasulullah sallam took their shahada without shaking hands so this is the classical opinion from these scholars but some contemporary scholars actually came up with this idea that it might not be haram because the intention is not to do something haram it might be considered as makru dislike so if you have done let's say if you are surrounded by the environment and if you have done once inshallah allah will forgive you hopefully because your intention was to avoid the embarrassment but if there are potential of more than one interaction then just make sure you convey the message to the other person that these are my gender interaction guideline and i will really appreciate if you can follow these guideline and we are living in a culture where every person respects faith and belief for coming from all different background inshallah so hope it is clear inshallah okay that's the third thing avoid physical contact as much as you can when interacting with the opposite gender and fourth last but not the least inshallah avoid meeting in private we all know those hadith where rasulullah sallam says when a guy and a girl is alone who is the third one someone said guy no guy <laughs> shaitan shaitan is there and you you cannot see this shaitan like a hollywood shaitan with two horns you have to feel this shaitan when you are alone shaitan will whisper in your ears why don't you do this why don't you crack a joke and take a next step and do that and then eventually do that <laughs> that that's that's the strategy of shaitan it will give, give you slow poison so stay away from meeting in private if you are discussing something even professional meet in public okay these four things but now how can we apply this in social media now we have social media right now you have facebook twitter instagram snapchat dj khalid you have so many things nowadays <laughs> yeah don't ask me how i know these things i spent some time with you i told you right okay honestly speaking how can we apply these four guidelines on social media especially the fourth one avoid meeting in private when i am texting an opposite gender no one else is reading that so now how can i apply that hadith where a guy and a girl should not meet in private one idealistic solution to this is that try to make it group conversation as much as you can i know in business world it's highly impossible but if you are young in school when your hormones are raging then i will say at that time make sure you do that make a group conversation and um, let's say if a time comes when you will start receiving 100 emails 150 text messages from the opposite gender if you are in that profession then you have to come up with other strategy maybe you will share your password with your wife or maybe with someone else who can actually check check and balance uh, keep the check and balance for you but that is extremely important because we have seen problem coming because of avoid meeting in private even on social media inshallah so just make sure we follow these four guidelines and remember one thing in the process of doing this now i'm coming to the second part of my conversation you might start feeling emotionally attached to other person or you might feel little attraction first of all let me tell you this attraction is absolutely natural absolutely natural allah subhanahu wa taala has built in installed this attraction between man and woman so if you will feel an attractive opposite gender if you will see you will feel kuch kuch hota hai you will feel that <laughs> yeah. you will feel small butterflies flying around your belly what you have to do you have to make sure it does not turn into big pigeon that's your responsibility inshallah okay now but now what you have to do i'm moving to the other part of my speech let's say if you are emotionally attached you know what is emotional attachment so if you are emotionally attached your mind is desensitized you cannot think anything about apart from her or apart from him imam is reciting fatiha and you are thinking about fatima yeah. or they are reciting about zakaria and thinking about zak in the class <laughs> right oh i know i have five minutes give me 
Jazakallah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, where I was, Zakaria and Fatima, right? Okay, emotional attachment. If you are seriously emotionally attached, then one of the problems which usually young scholars or Duat like me, we do, is that we will advise them, Akhi, you have to lower your gaze. He didn't lower his gaze, that's why he's emotionally attached. Akhi, you have to avoid professional conversation. He is insane in this private conversation. These advice won't work. This is proactive approach. Then you have to come up with reactive approach, inshallah. What is that reactive approach? Reactive approach is that first you have to see if you have a serious intention of making it halal. First then you will see, is my age appropriate? You know, many times you will start getting these feelings while early teenage. I just got the phone call two years back again, another phone call from a guy. His voice was very soft and polite after my Eid khutbah again. And he called me, he says, Imam, I heard your khutbah, I want to quit my relationship. Can you help me in getting married? I said, okay, tell me, what's your age? He said, 14 years old. I, I said, you just came out of diapers. <laughs> just shaky. I was optimistic. I asked what the girl age. He said, 13 years old. It's on a serious note, jokes are about a serious note. You might be physically balik, but what about aql? What about maturity? Don't give me examples of Fatima. You are still playing angry birds. <laughs> but that is something which we need to understand. If age is appropriate, if you are willing to take financial responsibility, then go for the marriage. Then talk to your parents. But if you are not in that age, if you have some financial problem or if you have an academic goal, if you're a first year married student, then it's very unrealistic for you to get married right now unless you have a family support. Then what do you have to do? You cannot have this haram relationship, girlfriend, boyfriend relationship. Then I'll advise you what Ibn al-Qayyam advised in Rawz al -Muhibbin. He actually wrote a book, more than 500 pages, called Rawdat al I don't know whether we have an English translation. The Garden of the Lovers will be the best translation of this. He said in his 23rd or 27th chapter, the heading of this chapter is, Fi man taraka mahbooba haraman. What does it mean? He said the first thing. He, whoever leaves his a girlfriend or her boyfriend for the sake of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to give him a halal and a better substitute. And he gave the example of one messenger. Do you know which messenger? Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam was alone in that dorms. Right, I'm trying to make it relatable. No one was looking at him. His parents are living in suburbs of Kanaan, right? I'm trying to make it relatable. No one was looking at him. And the most beautiful woman of the town invited him to do something haram. Hai tala, come on Yusuf. Ma'ad Allah, I can't do this, Yusuf said. He left one haram thing for Allah. You know what happened? Later in his life, Allah gave him wealth. Allah gave him kingdom. What else he could ask for? He got married to one of Ibn Ashur is mentioned. He got married to one of the most beautiful women of the town as named Asnat. That's what happened when you leave something for the sake of Allah. But you need to trust Allah, not test Allah. There is a difference. If you will try to test Allah, if you will text her right now, Imam Asif says it's haram, assalamu alaikum. And after Isha you will come, Imam Asif, Allah didn't reveal hurul line for me. Just wait, <laughs> wait. Allah will give that halal substitutes very soon, inshallah. But try to do this. And I will finish, inshallah. I promise, I promise I'll finish, inshallah. On this note, how to leave it? I know many young guys are struggling with this. Many young sisters are struggling with this. How to leave your girlfriend or boyfriend? I'll try to make it as practical as I can. First, convey the message that this is haram, I can't pursue this relationship. There is no barakah in this relationship. So convey the message. This will be halal for you to convey the message. Once you convey, because if you won't convey, the other person might wait for your response. Once you convey, delete that person. Delete all the pictures. Delete all the text messages because emotionally human being is very weak. You might go to those text messages every now and then after a week. Just return all those gifts. You know what kind of gifts I'm talking about, right? Those heart-shaped, I love you, and all. Just return those gifts. If you cannot give it back, just give it to me. I'll take it to Massachusetts with me. But don't keep it because, again, you are weak. Whenever you'll enter in your room, you will see that and you will remind about her or him. Because now you are taking a step get to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heart which prematurely get attached to someone else in a haram way can never get attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to understand this. And finally, see this bottle. It's a clean water right now. I'm assuming this is clean water, right? If I'll take it out, it will be empty. So to make it fill again, I need to pour clean water again. Otherwise, someone can pour 
dirty water. So now your heart will be empty. So you need to get emotional attachment again. If you are in that age or financially, inshallah, if you are ready, once your self-esteem will come up, just give yourself that much time, and then go into a halal relationship. And at the same time, use this opportunity, tears will come because you are emotionally attached, let that, that the tears come. Use these tears to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. And I hope that inshallah, this talk will be beneficial for you. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.